Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to audio recording of The Path, A Gamer's Guide to Mastery. This is one of the chapters, post-game review. Post-game review, score screen study. On the path of mastery, losses are inevitable. Maximizing your rate of progress requires awareness and comprehension of your frequent blunders. The net result of loss of a given match depends upon the opponent capitalizing on a series of compound and crucial errors. The key to improvement is articulating your mistake and correct action in their rep respective scenarios. We as players are unique in our time spent training, our practice styles, and the opponents we've faced. Remember and savor your victories, but do not forget to scrutinize defeats. Careful investigation of losses facilitates improvement. Be thankful for the opponents who strike you down. Were it not for their efforts, your vulnerabilities go unpunished. If they took the victory with heavy aggression, consider their economy size. Contemplate scouting patterns and devise a way to discover their plans in time to produce adequate defenses. If they took advantages by emphasizing economic growth and sacrificed defensive infrastructure, consider application of aggressive options. Consider the depth of information of any given page on the score screen. Some areas, your experience, performance, score summary, units, present a set of values but do not tell the story of the match in its full duration. Worker's Active Graph. For games up against heavy aggression, the first place to direct your attention should be the Worker's Active Graph. Scrutinize the development of your economy and compare its growth with the opponent economy over the course of the match. Consider how the value of workers relates to the number of base mineral and gas mining, 16 workers per base and six in gas. Take note of any plateaus in the progression of the two lines. If a player stopped producing workers at a given point in favor of army, consider how many workers the defender can make before switching to army production to hold the aggression. As a general rule, the defender can usually defend 1.2 times to 1.3 times the attacker's economy size. This could mean a few more workers mining minerals and one to two more gas geysers, depending on the attack. Think about any major differences in workers active for a sustained duration and estimate the area underneath the top line to the bottom line. Any sustained economy advantage can be leveraged later into more production. Any excessive economy advantage means death for the defender. For any major attack, there exists a threshold of too greedy to defend. It requires game knowledge and active scouting to learn the maximum defensible worker count versus any given army threat. Basically, against an all-in, you need to know how much you can drone or SCV or probe, and then make units and survive. There's a picture of a graph here, which you will not be able to see in the audio recording, but it's a very nice one. It's got a red line and a blue line. The blue line goes a little bit above 50. The red line stops at about 32. So the defender has 56 workers, and the attacker has 32. Can the defender hold that economy and survive, or do they die to the attack? Here are the key questions to consider looking at this graph. What are the key scouting reads to identify this attack? How many drones can Zerg produce to defend on creep against a Protoss all-in? What units should the Zerg produce to defend the attack effectively while spending income immediately? Would Roach Queen or Ling Bane be a more sophisticated solution based on Zerg's opening build? What are expected defending locations on each of the maps? Army Value Graph. Take a match where you've progressed your economy and military plans to command a large army. You reach maximum supply and move your army to the opponent's territory and take an engagement with superior supply or upgrades or value, but you lose the engagement. This is represented on the army value graph as a greater decline in your army value relative to your opponents. Consider your army composition and whether it was superior to the opponent army. Consider the positioning of your units and whether you are maximizing outgoing damage, that's your DPS, and minimizing incoming damage, that's your damage taken. These features, which appear as steep cliffs on the graph, are crucial points of study within your replay. Count the number of units of each type for each player at the start of the fight. 
Spot any units which spend time running around rather than dealing damage. Consider your formation, whether it would be better to cluster your forces or spread them. Sturdy units should be positioned to soak damage and fragile units should be in the back. There's another graph here in the book, which you cannot see in the audio recording. Both players take the first major engagement at maximum supply. Zerg, the red line, attacks with a greater army value the Protoss, on the Protoss side of the map and takes heavier losses than the defender. So the Zerg red line goes down a little bit more sharply than the Protoss blue line. A greater total amount of value is lost. You could even do a subtract, uh, subtraction between what was your army value at the top of the fight and then what was your army value at the bottom. That's basically how much you lost and you can compare that value to the difference in value shift for your opponent too. In the replay, investigate the number of units of each type in the engagement. Investigate the unit formations, the outgoing and incoming damage, the use of spellcaster energy, the upgrades, and the follow-up. Build order. In the full flow of RTS, it is difficult to simultaneously manage your own economy progression while defending early aggression and crafting an effective composition. Counting the number of their units and considering potential counter procedures is a step which can be exacted outside the live game, but from with the build order screen instead. There's another image here of the build order. You can see the player one is selected on the left and player two is selected on the right. There is a game time column. There's an action column, which has a drone, hatchery, drone, drone, spawning pool, drone, extractor. And there's a supply. So three lines going down vertically, the time in the game that it happened, the action of drone hatchery, drone, drone, spawning pool, and then the supply of 15 of 15, etc. This is actually a build order that was from Heart of the Swarm. So the values are different than they would have been in uh, Legacy of the Void. The hatchery is taken at 15 supply in this chapter, but in the modern world, we take it at 16 supply. Lately, there has been a 15 supply uh, extractor trick expand that's been gaining popularity. Kind of fun throwback. Know the details of their build. Compare the timing of your opponent army production structures with your progression. Terran opening opens three barracks reaper. Zerg opens 17 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool, and takes more than acceptable losses to the mounting reaper count. Consider making slight adjustments to your build and plan defensive procedure to account for the most powerful early attacks. Basically, know what you're going to do the next time you face 3 Rex Reaper. When comparing build orders, know 1. The advantages and disadvantages of each player's build 2. How to create advantages with your build against your opponent's build 3. How to defend a cheese build with your opening build 4. How to punish a greedy build with your opening build and five map specific adjustments. So an example for defending a cheese build, if you go hatch gas pool, sometimes you want to get a baneling nest before ling speed. If you know you're getting all in punishing a greedy build, you go hatch gas pool again. Maybe you want to flood links whenever your ling speed is done. That could be a way you can apply pressure. If your opponent is cutting corners, map specific adjustments. If you're on a very short rush map, you might go pool first instead of hatch first if you feel like you get cheesed all the time. Rather than be angered by losses, we should work to focus on feelings, intrigue, and curiosity and the details of the strategy. Expand your knowledge and improve upon your use of the available information. Use the graph, use the score screen, look at the build orders, and think about the procedures because these are situations you're going to find yourself in again you will get three racks reapered again. I made this chapter back in Heart of the Swarm, back when three racks reaper was a thing. It is still a thing. You can face three racks reaper or two racks reaper even to this day. So rather than rage at the build, just think about what are the limitations of this build. This build dumps a ton of gas into an early game unit, which means if you can sweep the field of reapers and get ahead in a macro game, they're gonna be really far behind in getting their stim and their bio upgrades. And they can't really go mech very well against it because then all the barracks are wasted. 
This has been Score Screen Analyzing Your Losses Neuro Audiobook.